Whilst the 2020 Enduro World Series is on hold for the time being, we thought it'd be a great chance to take a look back at the action from 2019, to see how it all went down, but also to speak to some of the pros to get some of their insights. The 2019 Enduro World Series kicked off in the Southern Hemisphere, round one in Rotorua, New Zealand, then on to Derby, Tasmania for round two. The trails of Rotorua are a hit with the riders, and this year had some great racing conditions in the low. The wait is over. Welcome to the Enduro World Series 2019. Round one, Rotorua, the, the hometown. The place is it's amazing, it's beautiful. And just like that, then the off season is over. It is gone, forget about it, let's all move on. Instead, let's focus on the dramatic surroundings of Rotorua on New Zealand's North Island to kick the new season into life. It was, uh, yeah, it was, the nerves are definitely high going into round one for Rotorua because you know, you never know where you're gonna be standing with, uh, with everyone else. You do what you can during the off season and build and preparation. And, I don't know, it's just one of those things. But enough talk. You have waited long enough. This is the Enduro World Series 2019, and the hunt for the title starts right here. The first stage, it was like that deep of uh, loam and uh, like really soft dirt in some places. of the year is freaking hard. It was a super physical stage to start off the day. Didn't really know what to expect for race run and then race run was pretty tiring. I remember you just the whole top section you're pretty much pedaling. First stage of the season and yeah, it woke everything up. <laughs> Good to get the first one in the bag and pretty clean so just want to keep it like that all day. Enough crash from last year. It's just like staying on. Got through cleans. Uh, the shoes are still full of dusty loam. Can't beat the uh, the good the good loaminess of Rotorua on a good day. It's like he wrote it. It's like yeah, it's, it's insane. Like Sam just said there, it's just dusty loam. It's set. More tiring than I thought it was going to be, which means the next two are going to hurt. <laughs> Yeah, we want to start with a, a clean stage, and that's what I did, so I'm happy. We're on to the next one. Before the teams had even boarded their flights, there had already been drama in 2019. The reigning back-to-back -back EWS champ Cecile Ravenel had a horrible crash training at home and has damaged several vertebrae. So sad to, to see her like this because she's, she's so motivated and she's so determined. You could see she really wanted to race, but obviously she, she wasn't. Um, in a state where she could race. Well, Martin May has had a fantastic end of 2018, but the star of 2017, Adrian Day, is back in action at this round. And you can bet that that time off the bike last year has made him quite keen to notch a few more wins onto his tally. 
Yeah, it was sick to see him back last year. It was cool. It's going to be an interesting time this year, I think, as well. Once once we all get back racing, everyone's had a bit more time in the off season to, to prepare, and I uh, feel like everyone's going to have a fair bit of fire in their belly to get racing and get some good results after this uh, downtime with the whole COVID-19. Into the Redwoods, the trail conditions were perfect, although slippy routes did catch out a few riders. Nice dirt conditions in Rotorua. <laughs> This place is awesome man, they have some of the best trails in the world and and today we have the best conditions for racing so I'm so stoked. Yeah. Oh, that's really hot. You press every time on the top and the bottom. It's super hot for hot. Uh, not too good. Come around rail on a big right and yeah, couldn't hang on to it. <laughs> It's probably one of my favourite tracks in the forest. Fortunately, I had an annoying crash up the top where I just went to hop a root and tucked the front wheel. Um, and then I ended up riding with my bars a bit crooked on the stage to the bottom, but uh, it was all good. Okay, but the like, loam after the rain was sick. <laughs> really good. Stage two was quite hot. Yeah, it's a uh, super slippery right now, so I got to be very careful. A little bit loose, but just gotta keep chomping away. Keep chomping away. <laughs> I like a little bit of looseness, it's good fun. I went from 13th on stage one to uh, second on stage two. That was, it was uh, a step in the right direction for sure. Fun! Uh, yeah. Pretty physical. It's kind of muddy in the woods there, and then you go out to the open, and it's like dusty and so different. I felt like I was not in the right floor, so I made a few mistakes. I really put myself into the herb box. <laughs> You're constantly pumping, pushing, paddling. good it's quite technical these stages and it's easy to do some mistakes but I feel great I love the ride here a few uh, locals down there cheering me on but uh yeah trying not to let it get me too stoked and just trying to stay stay with myself it's easy you carried away when the uh the local fans are out there uh, and the crowds are out there cheering you on it's easy to get out of hand and send it for them but yeah, just got to try to stay within yourself and <laughs> it's just you on the bike at the end of the day going down the track. I'm pretty stoked how the day goes so far. Still a beast of a stage, stage mm -hmm. four is extremely important. It's kind of the power stage, so you get the more point if you win it. Shar was now on a charge and won her first stage of the year. Like really close times in the, in the women, like only 1.2. Uh, between one and two so um, for me it was exciting I mean I wasn't expecting it but yeah of course it's uh, super exciting the battle for the men's overall was crystallizing the local boy was locked in conflict with a man who had finished 2018 on that searing high Mays won his third stage to keep the Kiwi 12 seconds at bay another Kiwi Cole Lucas was up three spots in the fourth behind Florian Nikolai now the next stage is the toughest of the weekend and in 2019 we've decided that that deserves a little extra recognition. Called the Queen's stage, there will be extra overall points up for grabs for those fast enough to tame it. I had a good stage on this one, can't complain, I kept it real clean and I think I had one of my best stage results of the weekend, yeah. I finished fourth on that one so pretty stoked on that. That one was the Queen's stage and yeah, she was long. <laughs> That was good. Nope. Yep. Just turned it back a notch and stayed on, so stuck. Yeah. 
feel a bit more technical, a bit less blown out, but it's good to see the crowd getting up there now. Really making you push that a little bit more, which is sick. And there's some hairy corners on there. See just Carlson go down on one of the left-handers there. Pretty physical at the top, and then you get in that steep section. <laughs> Very tired, so it's hard to keep a good line. It was, uh, it was fun, really fun, and uh, I know I know where I lost some time on this one, but uh, I mean it's uh, part of the race and uh, <laughs> I was still, uh, still pretty happy. Done. Are you okay? Hey. <laughs> you crash. So no regrets, I really pushed as hard as I could, it was quite like tricky, slippery everywhere, roots everywhere. When I've came and then roots come out like these ruts just form and that's when like getting sucked down you lose your speed and yeah I don't really like off camber. But. And there's some tight battles between the uh, the girls this oh, last year. Sorry, so uh, it's good to see some of the girls uh, battling against some of the some of the top girls now. It's sick to see for sure. Stage four results: Maze, me, and uh, Melamed. And then uh, we went on to the last stage up the skyline. The fifth stage was a downhill track plunge back down to the Crankworks Rotorua finish arena and represented the last opportunity for the riders to make their moves. When I was, I think I was sitting in like the top five overall, and uh, I definitely wasn't expecting to be in the top five on the, in the overall um, for my first race in elite, and uh, I was pretty nervous. <laughs> I didn't really want to go too hard because um, I knew if I went hard, I probably would have blown up and gone very far back. It was cool finishing off a crowd and a uh, home crowd, so it was always nice. <laughs> Really positive, but also really negative. And I think I was lying third after stage third, and then I had a, a component that fell in my bike, and I could basically not pedal for the whole stage four. be able to go into the uh, the hot seat in front of the home crowd for a wee bit. I was probably in there for about 20, 20 minutes or so until till Martin came down. It was it was an insane feeling to be in the hot seat and be amongst of these guys. Um, yeah, it was a cool feeling for sure. What's he gonna do? Martin's at the first place by 24 seconds. Isabel Corderio won the final stage, which would secure her the win. Bex Barona followed her home on the stage, but Morgan Shar finished fourth to hold on to second. 
The top eight women ended up being one of the most tightly contested races that the series has ever produced. Keegan Wright had a long sit in the hot seat at the bottom of the stage, but one thing we learnt in 2018 was that Martin Mays is often at his very best towards the end of the day. The Belgian would duly become only the second ever elite male to complete a clean sweep of the stages. Florian Nikolai picked up where he left off last time with a superb third place. Cole Lucas was fifth behind Jesse Melamed, whose aggressive riding towards the end of the day was duly rewarded with fourth. What's changed in the off-season for you? I don't really know. I haven't been riding so much this season. Uh, I was working quite a lot, but uh, I think the new bike really suits me and uh, I love it. I feel good on it. It was real weird today. I felt like I was kind of wasn't racing. I just felt like I was out riding my bike and and yeah, like whenever I had to sprint and stuff, my legs kind of felt heavy and kind of sluggish, but I think that maybe helped me a bit. It didn't, you know, like I kind of just had to pace myself and and yeah, I'm, I'm stoked to come away in the hometown with uh, second. With what happened with Martin, yeah, I did end up winning this race, but yeah, it doesn't feel like a, a proper win for me because, you know, he's, he's still at the fastest time and with the circumstances of what happened, he, yeah, he's still the winner of that race in my eyes for sure. Round two was just one week later, so not much recovery for the racers as they headed over to Derby, Tasmania. It's round two of the Enduro World Series. And see us how it's one of our favourites. We thought it'd be rude not to make an entrance. Welcome back to Derby. Tasmania is starting to grow a pretty cool mountain bike network, which is which is cool to see. It's definitely not lacking mountains, which was a surprise to me when I first came here. I had never really heard about Tassie much back in New Zealand, which is weird because it's so close. But yeah, there's sick riding here. It's, it's a real cool spot to hang out for sure. It was my first time in Tasmania and uh, I had seen a lot of images, a lot of videos and I was just uh, so stoked to be there and I was amazed by everything. The race started with a bang and the Queen stage, so points available straight away. It was Kumaguts to the 3.6 kilometer long classic. 20 seconds. <laughs> Very deserving of the Queen stage. Good to be so prepared for each different section and it's like rock, dirt, pumpy jumps. It felt good, but who knows? It's in the bike park, so it's a lot of uh, man made stuff, but uh, it, still, it still feels really natural. It's like really well done. And um, there were all these jumps at the end, and the crowd there was. And very reverse. We only had a bit of rain, but on the route it was uh, much more slippery than this practice this morning. Connor Farron make an appearance for this round. It's sick. sick to see him throw himself into some of the Enduros. This trail will go on to take the Trail of the Year award and the riders seem to love it, as Martin Mays definitely did. He took another win, this time over the downhill racer, Connor Farron. The Queen stays. always want to put a little bit more energy into it, but I just kept it smart. The trail network of Blue Derby have become world famous and the racing takes place on a really varied set of trails, from the granite at the top to some of the loamy trails further down. Round 1's victor Isabel Corderier opened her Tasmanian account with a 4 second win ahead of Morgan Shar, whilst EWS Asia Pacific winner Rowena Fry was in third. Stage 2, <laughs> coming between those narrow rocks, coming to it every time and you're just like, you just don't know whether your bars are going to grind or not on the, on the side. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the crowd is awesome up there. Couldn't even hear my bike anymore. I had a super stupid crash at the top 
for the last quite a lot of seconds, so I think that now I just need to like, be more focused and try to climb back up. <laughs> crashed on the first big rug, so that's on the ideal start. In Tasmania, the Four Cross legend Jill Kintner would try Enduro World Series racing for the very first time. That took me a while to get my breath back, I'll be honest. It's so much looser than it was in practice. It wasn't like a good tidy run by me, I was... Like uh, I was on a downhill track with all the spectators. Surprise to be uh, so much up the front on that stage, but it's obviously a nice surprise, you know. The third on this stage, I was so happy with that because um, I even I almost crashed on the, on one of the first rocks. It was a big drop, and I just went a little sideways before. So I went uh, second on that stage. My maze, two point four three back, and Theron into third. Again a top three finish and I came back uh, second of all after stage three. So from that stage I moved up another two spots, so I was sitting third place in the overall, um, sitting behind Malamed and Maze. So again there were so many people here. <laughs> some of the suits, some of the costumes that the, uh, the crowds are wearing for this race is set. Yeah, real physical. Yeah, last two coming up are probably most technical, most rocky. Keep you on your toes. Oh, man, I need to have a good crash down there as well. We've got the hardest stage out of the way, so I'm pretty happy uh, how everything is going so far. You do pedaling, pushing, turn, pedaling, pushing, turn, but I'm cow. Ciao, arrivederci. Kevin McGill taking the win on that one. He uh, had a flying season last year, which was sick to see. I just feel like he can pedal harder than me. <laughs> After crashing on stage two, I just switched my mind to like riding and having fun. Two stages to go, so a couple of pedaling ones out of the road and a um, beautiful day in Tassie, as it always is. Tassie local Rowena Fry put herself up in the third position with a win on four. She was now closing down on Kintner in the overall. Morgan Shar crashed heavily amidst the dusty turns. It took until stage four of Tasmania for Martin Mays to lose one in the year, and then he came second. But it was Kevin McHale who took the win on that stage. So I dropped two spots on that stage, off yeah, a fair bit of time. So I was sitting in fifth in the overall, which is which is still sick, like especially over amongst the uh, the massive field we have with a couple of crashes. Straight into it. Da, 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 da. The rocks were pretty scary, honestly. I think I'm a little blown after that.
stage four effort. So we headed up to stage five. And this one, I think it was uh, the scariest for, for a lot of people. Uh, there was this massive rock garden. It was so long, like you enter the rock garden and you it lasts for maybe 15, 20 seconds, never ends. And um, so yeah, everyone was quite a uh, bit stressed about that, I think. Maybe a little bit slow at the top, but it's good. The last stage, short, fast, good. Just gonna try to ride smart and uh, not make any stupid mistake on the last stage. Really worried about getting the mechanical in those rocks. Made it through and that was pretty clean to ride my race and see where I am at the end of it. It was just at loose, but I planned to do that. Yeah, these last two are my favorite and after crashing on four, I'm pretty hyped to bring it back. Jesse Malamed extracted his first stage win of 2019 from the rocks of stage 5, but it was now Florian Nikolai who was second in the overall, 18 seconds behind Mays. In the women's race, Isabel Cordurier won the stage to edge her lead out to nearly 25 seconds ahead of Jill Kintner. And you enter the rock garden and everyone was super quiet, like really big silence, so you ride the rock garden, and then when you just uh, pass the last dangerous rock, big rock. Everyone was just like <laughs> making so much noise. So that was so good. I think Tasmania is the best fan. It was so, so good. There was now only one stage left. World Trail Trouty awaited. Trouty. Pretty famous trail with the uh, spray painted big rock of the trout at the end there. So a short but sweet uh, stage. The last stage to finish, you just literally, uh, it's just like a downhill track. You, you blink and it's pretty much over. Cordurier suffered a slow puncture on the stage but still managed to get her intense bike down the line to claim second place on the stage. That result would cement her the win. Jill Kintner on her EWS debut took second place ahead of the impressive Rowena Fry. Noga Karem was fourth having ridden solidly all day. 
The defending champ Sam Hill won on Trouty, which will have come as some comfort after an illness plague start to his 2019 title defence. It would move him up into a ninth place finishing spot. Martin Mays did the sensible thing and brought the bike home safely and finished the day with a winning margin of 17 seconds. Florian Nikolai is edging closer and closer to that debut win and finished Tasmania in second, whilst third place on the podium was claimed by the downhiller by trade, Connor Fearon. Remy Govan had a brilliant run to fourth. So yeah, for that uh, Enduro World Series, I ended up in, um, in sixth place for the overall for that one, so that was sick to carry the momentum from Rotorua into the uh, Tasmania Enduro World Series. I mean, these girls are absolute pinners. They do all this full time and um, pretty incredible. I know these trails and yet, you know, a couple of girls were in front of me and they've seen the trail once. And thanks to Derby, awesome venue. Thanks to the Tassie locals for uh, coming out. Connor, third place today, happy with that? Yeah, like over the moon, kind of unexpected, like home for a top 20, but I must have had some good, good runs and uh, yeah, able to get third, which is insane. What is it about Enduro? That What's difficult about it? You're not hanging around like I used to think. This is like 80%, but you really got to go 100% for all these stages. Like these guys are crushing it. How did you find it? And be honest with me. Oh man, that's a hard day. <laughs> it's hard to feel good because it's like you're not you're not perfect. You don't know where you're going. There's huge pedals, and then at the end you're just dead, you know. And then you got to climb up to the top again. So, but at the end it's all smiles and uh, happy to survive just with one little crash. What other rounds we're going to see you at this year then? I had Whistler and North Star on the agenda, just test it out. <laughs> But now, like, maybe you get, you get hooked, you know? <laughs> we run next to him, he's here, he's here, we got him. Aww. Hola, there we go. Florian, another great result to start the year, are you happy? Really happy. Uh, it's a really, really big uh, start of season for me. Uh, Looking forward to Madeira next. Yeah, really motivated for Madeira. Big training now at home and see you in Madeira. You picked up that slow puncture on the last stage as well. What was going through your mind? I could feel the silence like blowing from my rear tires and I was like, come on, please walk. I need you like really right now. And it works. But I definitely wanted to like really fight with Jill because I don't want it, like, her to come to a race and like directly win because uh, we've been here and fighting like for a long time. But I'm pretty sure she's going to do well on uh, Enduro because like she's such a competitor. She can like definitely put the hard work in. Martin! Well, what can you say about the first two rounds of 2019? Just looking at that footage, don't forget that most riders have only had one run on this trail before they race it. Super impressive. Isabeau looked absolutely unstoppable, but also it was a great ride from Jill Kintner to get that second place in Tassie. Uh, Martin Mays looked so strong, but all for nothing in the end. Of course, Keegan Wright taking that win, and Florian Nikolai taking the win in Tasmania. He would go on to battle with Sam Hill at the end of the season. Sam did win the final stage in Tassie, so there's no doubt in his speed was still there.